For the last couple of years, I've been trying to swing the golf club a lot faster, requiring less effort. This is something I've been doing for quite a few years now. On and off, during the winter season, it'll be training time, I'd be in the gym, speed training. And as we get into the summer months, it would die down with all the events I'd be playing in. The main aim of this was to be able to hit the golf ball comfortably much further, requiring less effort. Meaning that when it came to competing in tournaments, I was able to hit the golf ball much further and more consistently. I was hitting more fairways, 400 yards and in, I was very gutted walking away with parts, which was very unusual for me. Leaving myself 60, 70 yards into greens and that's what, what was frustrating me the most, but it led to much lower scores. And for some time now, I've been wanting to start a new YouTube series, something unique on this channel, very similar to what Rick does with the Break 75 and Peter Finch with his quest for the Open. So now coming up to the end of my qualifications, I decided to put two and two together and came up with with a very good idea. This is something that I've been planning and preparing for the last three months and the idea came about around half a year ago. Ladies and gentlemen, this is something that no one else has ever done before on YouTube. I introduce to you the race to 400 yards. I'll be training, practicing and playing in the hope to hit the ball 400 yards. I've given myself six months to complete this challenge. I'll be training from home at the golf projects down at the Spartan Fitness Center with John Webb from Active as my strength and conditioning coach. I'll be tracking the progress and sharing everything with you once a month on this YouTube channel. I began training back in the middle of October and when it came to the first few workouts, I thought it was going to be a breeze. I used all of my favorite workouts that I did with John over the last couple of years whilst building this speed training I did and it was a shock to the system. I got in the gym, did a few workouts and halfway through I was thinking oh my gosh I need to take some weight off this, oh my gosh I need to do less reps. It was very very difficult and doing this made me realize that I needed to do a lot more training in the gym before I started to take the speed sticks out and do training with them also because the last thing I wanted to do was get straight back into both hitting the gym, going to speed training, and then getting injured, because that'll be, I wasn't gonna do it that quick. But I stuck to the process. I stuck to the three workouts a week, two workouts from what John gave me, and one where we used to call it like a beach workout where you just do all your, the arms and everything else that guys enjoy doing. Well, that's what I would do once a week. But the other two were specifically designed to increase swing speed. So those three workouts per week works very well because over two to three weeks, I started to really get a good hang of doing those exercises. So that meant that I thought, right, I need to increase the load now. I need to change the exercises to make them harder. And I kept going with that. I had to change them, I think, once or twice and then that made me realize that I was adding more weight I was changing the exercise and making them harder and then I noticed a big difference when I went and practiced and played a huge difference in fact I only went to the range a couple of times after this because I've been busy with coaching and everything else that I do I was being able to hit the golf ball much further requiring less effort as I've mentioned before but striking the golf ball really well and I've not changed anything in my swing for the last well I've not even changed anything in my swing this year and after another week or so, I realized I needed to up my game. I needed to start this speed training off. I just knew it was time. Let's go and see how I got on. Geared up, ready to go. It's gonna be absolutely freezing doing these swings. So I'm gonna have to do some sort of stretching beforehand, if I can be wrong doing that. Well, yeah, tripod, got my phone. Let's go. I can feel how much slower I am now compared to what I used to be last year. It's going to be an interesting race. Well, considering I'm still catching my breath, God, I've got some work to do. It was, uh, yeah, quite interesting. And after that first B session, of course, I realized that I was definitely going to be doing this challenge. And there was one person I needed to call, one person I needed to ask for help. And that was John from Active. This is the 
So I tried to message him and he was well up for helping out to measure the progress, to see where I'm at now and to see what other things I improve along the way. The most important thing he was going to track was producing the right programs. The right programs are so important for something like this. Whether you're trying to gain weight and become a bodybuilder or do something like what I'm doing where you're trying to increase your swing speed, the two different things, completely different exercises, I'd highly recommend going to see John if you're looking into doing something like this. The programs that he sets out are specifically designed to improve those aspects. So after some messages and FaceTime call, we decided to meet up at the start of January to gather some information and come up with a plan, a plan to be able to stick to and hopefully hit the ball 400 yards by the end of June. So down here in Altrincham to do the first session in the gym with John, strength and conditioning coach. We're gonna be doing a couple of tests, the resistance test, strength test, power test to see the results that I'm at now. Last year had a couple of results. We're gonna see if we've maintained them, if not improved them from last year. If that's the case, that's a good start. A few screening tests were involved to see if I've lost or gained weight and I was absolutely buzzing when I found out I gained over six kilograms of weight. It was brilliant. I was like, yes, get in, four, let's go. When it came on to the muscle and fat ratios, it was, again, I was like, yes, get in. I'd gained a couple of centimeters around my chest, arms. It was like, brilliant. Then it came to my waist and that was the most humiliating thing I've ever had before. <laughs> Put the tape measure around my waist and he said, have you been eating a few pork pies? I was like, what do you mean? He said, you've gained six centimeters around your waist since last year. Six centimeters, four. My confidence was up here and then all of a sudden when I found out that I was like, that's just wonderful. So after doing these measurements, we went out and did some tests, a few throws, few jumps to see how much force I could produce measured in Newtons. And the one that interested me the most was they had, a, I can't remember what it was called, but basically it measures how much force you can produce from the ground. You've got a wooden plaque, you've got a chain that's attached to it, and you've got to pull the chain as hard as you can. And he's basically trying to rip the chain off. What that does is it measures how much force you can produce from the ground, but also how much weight you are able to lift, especially with deadlifts. There's a certain deadlift that I do, which is TBDL, which is the one where it's from on the ground and then you lift it up rather than the one being over the head. It said that my one rep max was 174 kilograms. Well, when it came to doing the different activities afterwards and testing for posture and form, John was able to push me for two reps at 180 kg. So that wasn't quite right. It was quite interesting to take note of this. After the session, we reviewed what John was able to gather. It's kind of a plan of action that I could stick to. And basically what he was saying was because my peak force is too low and we've got a relatively long time from backswing to downswing to hit the golf ball at our maximum speed, we don't really need quick speed. We need to produce more force from the ground because that's the biggest correlation to producing more club head speed. So the most vertical force I can produce, the more club head speed I'll gain. He also explained that when it came to completing these activities, especially the speed training, I needed to track exactly how fast I was swinging the golf club. I've got speed monitors to make sure of this because the last thing I want to do is train to swing slower. And what I mean by this is basically if my peak is 150 miles an hour, for example, the aim is to stick to over 95%. If I drop below 95% and let's just call it 145 because that's what I like to I like to stick it to fives. If I drop below that, then I shouldn't be training anymore. I should stop and leave it. And the reason is if you carried on training, but you're getting tired and it's going lower and lower and lower and all of a sudden it hits 130, you're training your brain to swing the golf club much slower. And there is no such thing as muscle memory. It's the neurosystem that fires signals to the working muscles to do a certain activity, to do a certain move. And in this case, swing the golf club faster. So it's really important that I give myself enough rest time in between activities. Because if you imagine this, you've had a rough night's sleep compared to you've had a great night's sleep. When you're doing work, which one is going to help you perform better during the day? The better night's sleep. And it's the same with this. If I get up one morning and I am really rough because I had a really bad night's sleep, my performance levels aren't going to be anywhere near as good as having a really good night's sleep. 
So the aim here is to only have one speed training session a week because I found that two to three, last year when I did this, I was training to swing slower. So lesson learned, one speed session a week with three different workouts. Two specifically designed from John and one where I just basically do what I want. That leads me to tell you now where I'm currently at with all the numbers, the figures, the most interesting part about this. How fast am I physically swinging the golf club? What's that generating in terms of ball speed and how far is the golf ball traveling? So I haven't been able to do many speed sessions with the driver down here at the golf projects because we have a HD net and our aim is to put another net over it to protect it when I'm doing my long drive swings. But with the 7-iron, I've been able to hit 115.4 miles an hour club head speed, which I'll take any day of the week for now. But with the driver, the big stick, the most interesting club in the bag for swing speed, I've been able to get it up to 132 to 133 miles an hour, to be exact, 132.6 miles an hour, which is transferred into a ball speed of 194 miles an hour. For the record, this is on TrackMan. And when using the speed sticks, the highest I've got to so far. The heavy weight is 149 miles an hour. The midweight stick, it's also 149 miles an hour. And with the lighter stick, which is much lighter, is 151 miles an hour. And it's quite interesting actually from the results that were shown during the um, fitness test that I did with John and those tests I did with the speed sticks, they both correlated and linked very similar because I can lift heavy objects very well but I can't lift lighter objects at speed. After doing a longest drive competition against Graham, who owns this place and also coaches here, Graham was able to smash one out of the park at 352 yards with a club at speed of 123 miles per hour, 184, I think it was, ball speed. And I was 10 miles an hour quicker club head speed, and I was 11 miles an hour quicker ball speed, but I could only hit it three yards further. My longest was 355 yards. So that means that I should be looking and considering another driver. I'm in the market now for a long drive driver. I'm going to be looking at a four degree because what I'm finding is that when I'm swinging and I'm swinging upwards and through, the loft I'm producing on the golf club with my Callaway at the moment, which is eight degrees of loft, isn't low enough to be able to handle it. But also I need to be looking at my smash factor numbers because it's all good having loads of club head speed, but then I need to still be able to strike the golf ball well, otherwise it won't produce the best ball speed. And ball speed is distance. And by doing this, I'm going to have a few sessions on Trapman, just hitting a few shots comfortably with seven irons, five irons, maybe hit a few drives at a comfortable pace. And my comfortable pace swing is 125 miles an hour. It's quite interesting because when you absolutely crush one out the center, it still goes at 10 to 15 yards further, as we know. So I was able to hit one that was very comfortably at 124 miles an hour, I think it was, and I hit it exactly out the middle, and it produced over 340 yards of distance. When you do those correlations and calculate it in comparison to my longest drive hits at 133 miles an hour, I should be hitting it a lot further than 355. But I've still got a long way to go. With my club head speed at the minute, I've calculated that I need to swing the club well over 140 miles an hour to be able to hit a golf shot 400 yards. And to be specific, 146 miles an hour, which is an incredible amount of speed. I've got a lot of work to do. But from the training I've done and the training that I plan on doing with John and all the speed sessions, it is for sure achievable. The race to 400 yards, chapter one out of six complete. Thanks for tuning into the video. Make sure you stay tuned as lots more is to come. Chapter two will be set to come out mid-March, so make sure you keep your eye out for that. Cheers for watching.